This whole exercise is really about finding out where you can make the most value in your business. Now, I feel that a lot of people jump the gun and they say, oh, we're gonna try and put in predictive model or we're gonna you know, try and optimize a process, but really there's not even basic sort of reporting tools. So what I like to refer to is this is actually an analytical maturity model and it's a good tool to use when you're trying to come up with um, data-driven decision-making, right? This is, a, um, this is really what the emerging tech is about. What you're trying to do is make every shift your best shift. So that guy that has got an awesome knowledge of how to run the plant to get squeeze the most out of it, we're trying to impart that knowledge into compute and hopefully, it doesn't matter who's operating the plant, eventually it'll just run at its highest capacity. Time and time again, I've seen companies uh, go after low-hanging fruit and it's honestly like quite a big trap. The reason is, you know, no, you don't get the business buy-in with low-hanging fruit because quite frankly no one really cares if it succeeds or not. And even if you do really well, it's not going to be a large enough margin to make a big difference. So what I would recommend here is identify that opportunity where you can go all in and get a large return. And even if you only uh, affect the margin by 1%, make it that 1% that is large enough that gets people excited. You know, the digital twin is a digital or a data representation of what is happening in uh, the entire uh, mine or plant or shipping or that whole supply chain. If you can model that out uh, and get some visibility on what's happening, that's, that's really the sweet spot where you can start um, being informed for decision making. So if I call back to the, the, the data driven decision making and analytical maturity graph, it's just another form of that. Um, it's an, often an alternative to a dashboard and you can take it forward. But because it's such a massive undertaking, you know, you lean on ways to scale out. So what you'll want to do is try and bring all of the data that's required for this supply chain into a place where you can then share it safely to scale out with either vendors or crowdsourcing. Um, the way that this is done from a technology standpoint is you can get uh, very cheap object storage, get all of the data loaded into it in its lowest format. So this, is, this means you know, taking data out of historian systems and all these other systems in its raw format. You then have to go through a data scrubbing exercise where you're removing, say, operator names and the, you know, that sort of personal identifiable information. But once you get it into this big data location, um, the term is called data lake. If you can get it into a data lake, you then work on establishing a, uh, an agreement that people, can, that people can sign where they say they're not going to do anything dodgy with the data and that it's purely going to be um, to try and drive an outcome. And uh, so this is what I call the data science standard, but it, it's really just a bit of legal documentation. And then these, these platform technologies allow you to share data externally with people so they can use their own tooling uh, to ingest the data and do their own modeling and um, this is really what the universities are teaching as well so crowdsourcing through um, say Unearthed you can get your problem areas and the related data and create little projects that people can then work on and you may get an outcome and you may not but either way it's it's sort of free labor right um, but that operating model works when scaling out with vendors as well so what I try and give guidance on is, if you don't have the internal capabilities, you might want to grow it over time, but you still need to be delivering outcomes. So try and engage with the specialists who can come do this crowdsourcing or deliver modeling and outcomes. Um, and then you might be able to learn from that and build your own domain experts that are also data scientists. Um, so it's been really successful with the companies uh, that have done this and um, Newcrest is one of them. They have run quite a few on Earth and had some wonderful outcomes uh, by simply sharing the data with people. Uh, there are platform tooling um, like the Microsoft platform that has the end-to-end -end DevOps for consuming data, training models, producing them and then operationalizing them on site, on infrastructure that doesn't need to talk to the internet. Um, and, and if you're making business critical decisions then you really want to be in this, this zone. Let's let AI try random things and uh, see if it can net better results and learn from its mistakes.
uh, and that's that's another value of the sim is you could either have AI play it or you can let operators play it you know give them the controls they can adjust feeder speeds and crushing gaps to see if they can theoretically get higher results um, so it's a great tool for for those experimentation type things as well this is a digital twin insofar as it allows you to do what-if analysis for your future settings and this is what we would probably coin as a decision support system so we're not changing the settings on the plant itself all we're doing is providing recommendations to the operators I like the idea of having this as a stepping stone to full automation. What we can do as well is when people start accepting some of these results and putting the settings in, we can teach the AI that that was probably the best setting to use. So getting that feedback loop initially where the operators are still involved and then moving to a world where it's fully automated after that. What I think is gonna happen in the next few years is um, just the increasing number of models will allow us to model instead of individual areas of the mind, you might see whole of mind modeling. So a digital twin of a whole mind, being able to say, well, my block model has got this ore coming in. Tell me what the optimal setting for my entire mind processing will be. It's the precursor to the whole of mind prediction. So as you link these models, say you, your primary crusher, tertiary crusher, and you're modeling the orbit and you, you're doing more and more of these elements and you're, you have models that allow you to forecast into the future and predict the settings that are optimal, you should be able to get a whole of mine view of it.